Hurricane Matthew. First it wasn't coming, then it was. Small storm, tropical storm, not coming, then 48 hours out, it is coming as a major storm. Preparation finished, we decided to film the arrival. Driving in the area of Williamstown and Island Seas, I drove through a puddle and severely damaged my car. Another story. Back at home, we put the last minute touches on the garden. Potted trees either up against the house or laid flat. Electricity was out by 3 p.m. I tried to film a clip every hour. First hour, 4 p.m. Second hour, 5 p.m. Holding the door, the wind pulled me outside, reverse direction, and flung me down the hall. Luckily or skillfully, I let go of the door as it was slamming shut. That is why the video goes dark. Prudently, I decided not to try that again. It was dark by 6 in any case. The storm was scheduled to peak at 8 p.m. Melinda, the dogs, and I were huddled in the dark. The wind gave up howling and began to screech. I am told that it reached speeds between 142 and 176 miles per hour in our area. By midnight, the winds were down to around 70 miles per hour. Damage was pretty much done. We stupidly went outside for a few minutes to check on the cars in the dark, then stayed in till sunrise. There are about 60,000 people on Grand Bahama, which means there are 60,000 distinct hurricane stories. This is mine. Others are different. We woke to a changed world. Without really checking our yard, we rushed to the dive shop to check on the resort, boat, and compressor. Power lines were draped across the roads. I was amazed by this power pole with the middle blown out. The force and physics of this is incredible on many levels. Melinda was devastated by the down gates and the resort roof. Great news, bad news. The boat is still floating in its slip. It lost two of the three front windows. In the equipment room, the compressor is still wrapped and apparently undamaged. The roof membrane blew off, nothing to keep the water out. Luckily, dive gear can get wet. The restaurant roof ripped off, taking a portion of the dive shop roof with it. Most of our contents were okay, but the ceiling, slat wall, and fixtures are destroyed. A bunch of cleanup and we are back in business, when phone and electricity is restored and divers are able to return.